So you've got 24 hours in a day. You're never going to have another one, but that's not the only problem. Your dance cards are full, aren't they? There's nobody in this audience who's looking for advice from me on how to fill your free time. You don't have any. Dance cards are full. Not only that, it gets even worse than that. If you put in too many hours in a day, at a certain point, you get decreasing incremental return on each additional hour invested. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Of course you do. Not only that, but if you put in way too many hours, you begin to occur, incur collateral damage. It shows up in making more mistakes. We see this in all the time in hospital residents and interns who are working these 16 and 24 hours and you know, end up killing patients because they're so exhausted. You end up seeing it in the form of disengagement. You end up seeing it in the form of burnout. And then it begins to take its toll on families. And then it begins to take its toll on people's health. And it is a vicious cycle that continues. And therefore, time is not a resource that we can rely on any longer. This is scary, because we must find a way to build more capacity, given the inescapable reality that we're going to have to do more. So what are we going to do? Well, the good news is there is an answer. There is an answer, and that answer is energy. So time is something that is outside you. It moves past you like a train in the night, and when it's gone, it's gone forever. But energy is something, a resource that's inside you. It's something that you can use more skillfully in three different ways for your own benefit. The first is that energy can be expanded. In other words, if you push a muscle against resistance in the proper way, you will ultimately build a bigger muscle, and in effect, you'll have more energy available to you to do a task. The same applies to anything that you train systematically. So that's one way that you can get more capacity. The second way you can get more capacity is that you can renew your energy. Unlike time, energy can be renewed in a systematic way if you value renewal. And then the third thing about energy is that you can learn to use it more skillfully and efficiently if you understand what's going on inside you. Now, what's going on inside you has not been a source of interest to most organizations ever. It's terra incognita. It's a vast, unexplored territory. But you know what? The world has changed in some fascinating ways that make it critical that we begin to understand in a wholly new way what's going on inside us from a neuroscientific point of view, from a physiological point of view, from a psychological point of view, because all of those, if we learn to corral them, are pieces of a puzzle that allow us to bring more energy to the table. The other thing about energy is, as I said just a moment ago, it's contagious. So from an organizational perspective, whose energy is the most contagious? Well, of course, it's managers and leaders. Why? by virtue of their disproportionate authority over others. Their energy is where people turn. There's a guy named Robert Sutton. Actually, I saw he has a, one of his books is outside, Robert Sutton, who uh, talks about a, a study that Ashley Montague did in, in his book. Uh, Ashley, the anthropologist Ashley Montague, who studied baboons who have, uh, for better or for worse, about 98% of the same DNA that we do. And one of the things he discovered about baboons is that in any given tribe, those baboons look to the alpha male once every 20 seconds. Why? To find out whether they're safe, to find out whether they're secure, to know whether it's OK to be in the performance zone or to be on alert by moving into the survival zone. We are not that different. We are not that different. So for this audience, and especially for those you support, we need to think about the role of a manager or a leader in a very different way than we have previously. I'm going to suggest to you that the primary role of a manager or a leader, the most fundamental role that a manager or a leader can play is to be the chief energy officer. 
In other words, the job of a leader or a manager is not to do the work of the people who, works for that, who work for him or her. It's to free those people to bring the greatest, the, the most of themselves and the best of themselves to work every day. It's to do this. It's to mobilize people's energy. It's to focus it narrowly on the task at hand. It's to direct it toward the key priorities. It's to inspire people to want to mobilize and focus and direct their energy. And it's to regularly recharge or sustain the energy of those they lead.